Hi, this is how to do T2 split on an assassin in a Fisher of Woe speed clear. The armor set you'll be using is 5 Blessed Insignias, an inherent plus 1 Shadow Arts headpiece, a Rune of Superior Shadow Arts, a Rune of Superior Vigor, and 3 Runes of Attunement. The weapons you'll be using are a Silencing Spear of Enchanting with the inscription Energy plus 5, a Shield of Devotion with the inscription Through Thick and Thin, a Shield of Devotion with the inscription Not the Face, a Shield of Devotion with the inscription The Riddle of Steel, an Insightful Staff of Enchanting with the inscription Have Faith, Energy plus 5 while enchanted, and a Silencing Longbow of Enchanting with the inscription Energy plus 5. Your attributes will be set to 12 Earth Magic, 12 Shadow Arts, and 3 Critical Strikes. And your skills are Shadow Form, Shroud of Distress, I Am Unstoppable, Ebon Battle Standard of Honor, Sliver Armor, Techno Babble, Heart of Shadow, and Death's Charge. Skill number 7, Heart of Shadow, can be exchanged out for Viper's Defense if you want to be super fast. The pecans you'll be using are a cupcake and an apple. I personally use a candy corn and a golden egg just for battlefield, but that is completely optional. You'll also want a legionnaire summoning stone, or really any summoning stone, so you have a backup plan for the cave wolf, as well as you should bring power stones so you can be reckless in cave. This is the route for T2 split. Pop camp, kill the priest of Menzies, kill the battlefield wolf, run the unholy text back to the quest givers, run through forge which should already be opened, kill the seeds of corruption in cave, kill the beach wolf, kill the cave wolf, send the mage, and kill the TOS lord. Before you enter FOW, wield a staff. As soon as you load, auto run forward, death's charge up the first cliff, heart of shadow off a monk up the second cliff, avoid TOC aggro on the left, and avoid the incoming shadow casters on the right that the empty will be bawling. Don't maintain any enchantments, pausing to cast them would be a waste of time. All you need to do is run through this trench. Here, cast just Shadow Form and Death's Charge to the farthest Shadow Caster. You'll want to aggro these three Shadow Casters into these skeletons so that the skeletons will kill the shadows and the main team will move quicker. Now, in Battlefield, Impalers carry distracting shot. To avoid interrupts, do two things. Number one, don't cast spells adjacent to impalers. Number two, don't cast spells consecutively. Wait around one second between casts. Switch to your piercing shield. Target the farthest ranger. Cast shadow form here and death's charge to that ranger. Heart of Shadow and run north. If you travel a decent distance, the Impalers will break so that they won't be on top of the shadows. Aggro this one skeleton group only, consisting of two Aether Breakers, four Impaler pop-ups, and one Berserker. Now Sliver, the Berserker, and Shadow Beast together. Wield a staff while casting Sliver, then switch to your spear, babble the monk, and auto-attack the monk. You do this so that Sliver has a 20% chance of half skill recharge, and Babel's Days lasts 33% longer. Repeat the process and Sliver down the Monk. Then you can start Slivering down the Rangers. I'm auto-attacking with my staff here, because I have an earth magic staff, so I deal just a bit more damage. At all costs, avoid that skeleton group that's patrolling toward us. Okay, the quest givers are popped. If you're sneaky, you can Heart of Shadow off an Aether Breaker up this cliff. Take both quests, use IAU, and Death's Charge to one of the foes attacking you. Now run to Priest. I'm going to cut to a different run.
aggro these two impaler pop-ups here, Heart of Shadow off them, now grab this one skeletal group consisting of two Aether Breakers, two Impaler pop-ups, and one Berserker. Sliver down the Berserker. First, pull the Shadow Monk down from the north. You can pull the Monk and Priest down together if you want to be super fast, but they tend to stack on top of each other when you do that, so I just avoid that headache and I pull them separately. Okay, the Monk is pulled, now I'm going to pull down the Priest. Pull him so that he is adjacent, but not on top of, the Shadow Monk. Use IAU when pulling through Impalers. Okay, great. Now position yourself so that the only foe in Sliver's range is Priest. Cast Sliver, babble the Shadow Monk, and attack the Priest of Menzies. He will die. You can grab the Unholy Text. Now you can go Sliver down the Battlefield Wolf. The Shadow Monk will heal the wolf if the wolf is within caster range of the monk, so simply keep the wolf out of caster range. But if it's unavoidable, you can always babble and auto-attack the monk while you sliver the wolf. Try to avoid aggroing other skelly groups, but if you do, it's no big deal. While carrying the text, you are not affected by your weapons enchanting mod, so drop the text if you want to recast Shadow Form. Also, don't use Death's Charge or Heart of Shadow while holding the text, or you will drop it. Hand in the text. And you can run to Forge. It should be already completed. The main team isn't quite finished, so you may as well help them out by tanking the south side for defend. I'll just take this opportunity to explain how Cave works. Cave has driders that will remove your enchantments if you drop shadow form. But more importantly, Cave is full of spiders that carry savage shot, which can interrupt you. However, there are many deep indentations on each side of the cave, which are safe spots. If you cast your spells while in those indentations, all of the enemy's attacks will be obstructed, so you cannot be interrupted. There is always an indentation in the wall parallel to all of the Seeds of Corruption, except for the first one. Okay, for defend, switch to your blunt shield. Aggro the spawns and pull them back. Right wall block them. Death's charge to the shadow beasts. Pull them out of caster range of the corpses. Okay. Now run to cave. Switch to your slashing shield. If you're able to de-aggro all the shadows at this point, like I do here, you can try and kill the cave wolf now. Aggro was too tight. Oh well, 
Let's try again after cave. Switch to your piercing shield and run to beach. You can sliver a couple of seeds on your way there. Cast sliver while you're moving to interrupt your movement like I do here. This trick helps avoid interrupts. You have more leeway to cast shadow form when you're first running to beach because not all the spiders have spawned yet, but it's still risky. I interrupt my movement to cast Sliver again here. Here I use the safe spot to recast Shadow Form. The end of cave is full of invisible walls, so you can Heart of Shadow off this drider to make it simpler. Now kill the beach wolf. You need at least three casters plus the wolf to have enough damage to take it down. You can also aggro the ancient scales here to fuel sliver, depending on the spawns. Do not aggro the snarling driftwoods because they are headaches. Here I wait for shadow form to recharge and I cast it again, fresh, before I re-enter the cave. I death's charge over the invisible walls, I interrupt my movement to cast sliver, I use the safe spot to recast Shadow Form and Shroud. Now here's a trick to kill the seeds super safe. Cast Sliver in the safe spot, Death's Charge to the seed, and use Honor immediately. Then reposition yourself so that you're just hitting the seed. I cast Shadow Form in another safe spot. Sliver in the safe spot, but I decide not to Death's Charge because I don't want to lose aggro. I interrupt my movement to cast Honor. Recasting Shadow Form and Shroud in the safe spot. There is really no standard guide to kill Cave Wolf. You have to be aware of your surroundings and look for an opportunity to kill. There are three basic ways you can use to kill it. Number one, pull it into the cave, the spiders will kill it. Number two, with the cave aggro, run out of the cave, right up to it, then sliver. And number three, aggro the shadows and cave foes together, they are hostile to each other, then, while they are distracted, you can pull the wolf to Nimros the Hunter and use a summoning stone. And remember, the Shadow Monks will heal the Cave Wolf. Okay now, go send a mage. Switch to your slashing shield. You just need to get into compass range and the mage will walk. Now you can run to TOS.
target a melee, Heart of Shadow down this cliff, immediately Death's Charge to the Infernal Worm that would have spawned exactly where that glitched Mesmer is standing. He's not there because the T1 split went insane. This chain of shadow steps will break the melee aggro as you see here. If the T1 split has left you 4 Mesmers, you can just use the Mesmer aggro to sliver down the TOS Lord. Otherwise, in this case, where you have 0 Mesmers, you can get a little fancy. We're avoiding that Abyssal aggro over there because they're still alive. Now switch to your longbow. Pull the Lord out, walking backwards. Make sure the Lord settles behind you, like here. Bow these rangers and monks, and sliver down the Lord. The monks usually heal the Lord, however, if you pull them with this method, they will not heal him. Boom. T2 split is done. Now you can go to forge and steal all the drops.